everyone this is abhishek so in today's session we are going to discuss about ekman transport uh, from oceanography so this mechanism explains about the movement of uh, water in uh, ocean surface so uh, there are few questions which will be answered uh, by this session by the end of this session so first one is why there is movement of water or which is the driving force for the movement of water or formation of waves on the surface okay which is the driving factor for the movement or for the movement or for the formation of waves for the movement of sea water or uh, for formation of waves e waves okay so which is the driving factor which is creating uh, this movement in the sea water so if this movement is happening whether it is happening only on the surface or it is also affecting the deeper region okay whether the movement is in is only in the surface the surface water or it is affecting the deeper region okay so this movement which we are observing on the sea surface in form of waves is it also there uh, in the deeper water or is there is movement in the deep water because of this driving factor which is causing the movement in surface water and if it is affecting to the deeper water then what is the depth up to how much depth this movement is there or we can find uh, this moving sea water okay up to how much depth the movement is observed the movement of sea water or ocean water is observed okay what is the direction of motion next is what is the direction of motion what is the direction of motion of the water what is the direction of motion of the water if it is dependent on the factor if it is dependent on the factor or what are the factors that affect the direction of movement what is the factor which is affecting the movement and what is the factor affecting the direction of the movement okay or what are the factors what is or are if there is a single factor or multiple factor are affecting the direction okay so what is the factor affecting the direction of movement okay so all these questions are solved or answered by a mechanism called ekman's transport so first question was what is the driving factor so the driving factor is wind the answer is wind because of wind only there is movement 
wind is responsible for the movement of the water how when wind flows on the surface when wind flows on the surface it drags the surface water when wind flows on the surface it drags the surface water so the surface water is set in motion so if the wind is dragging the water dragging effect or frictional effect dragging effect or the frictional effect because of movement of wind or because of movement of air because of wind flow because of wind flow sets the surface water in motion okay so the dragging effect or the pulling effect or the frictional effect is causing the surface water to move so if the frictional effect by wind is causing the movement then what is the direction whether the movement of surface water is same as the wind direction the answer is no why when wind is dragging the effect uh, when wind is dragging the surface water what will happen the water is willing to move in the direction of wind or the water tend to movement in the direction of wind but there is coriolis effect we have studied about coriolis effect what is coriolis effect coriolis effect is the deflection effect coriolis effect is causing deflection in the moving object coriolis effect is responsible for deflection deflection of path of the moving object on earth okay so earth is rotating so there is a rotating frame of reference so on the rotating frame of reference when any object is moving the path is getting deflected because of coriolis effect and the direction of deflection is towards right in the northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere so the deflection due to coriolis effect deflection direction due to coriolis effect is towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere okay so as the coriolis effect is deflecting the moving water the surface uh, water or the moving surface water it is willing to move in the direction of dragging wind or it is the surface water is trying to move in the direction of wind but it is getting deflected by coriolis effect to the right of the wind direction in northern hemisphere and to the left of the wind direction in the southern hemisphere so in this example we'll talk about one hemisphere let's talk about the northern hemisphere so here in this diagram you can see the wind is in a direction let's say it is north so the water is trying to move in a direction in north because of the dragging effect of wind but the surface water or the uh, the near surface water which is uh, in direct contact with the wind the surface water which is in direct contact with the wind it is trying to move in the direction of wind but due to coriolis deflection it is deflected towards right and to how much angle it is deflected it is deflected to an angle of 
45 degree okay the surface water is moving in a direction 45 degree towards right of the wind direction so whether only surface water is moving so this surface water is set in motion because of dragging effect of wind the bottom layer which is just uh, below the surface layer suppose the surface layer a thin layer on the surface is set in motion at 45 degree to the wind direction there is another layer let's say this is the first layer and the second layer for example the second uh, the first layer is of a uh, like a small thickness then second layer of smaller thickness there will be another layer which is also getting dragged because of the movement of the first layer of water okay wind is flowing so because of wind the upper layer is set in motion because wind the dragging effect of wind caused the water to move okay then because the first layer is moving there is another layer the second layer the second layer which is just below the first layer of water that is getting dragged because of the movement of first layer because of the movement of first layer the second layer is getting dragged okay when it is when there is frictional energy which is uh, uh, like transferred from the first layer to second layer so the second layer will start to move or it will it will also start uh, to move in a direction in which the dragging is uh, in which direction the dragging is the dragging effect is seen or the dra dragging effect is given by the first layer okay the second layer try to move in a direction in which the first layer is moving like in the first case in the first layer movement of first layer case the first layer is trying to move in a direction in which wind is moving but coriolis effect is turning it to 45 degree or to the right of uh, the wind direction in northern hemisphere similarly the second layer is getting dragged by the first layer so second layer also try to move in the direction of first layer but again coriolis deflection which will cause or will uh, will move it or will deflect it towards the right of direction of movement of first layer if we'll see in this example suppose this is the first layer this one is the first layer okay first wind is flowing in this direction wind is flowing in this direction i hope you can see this uh, this black pin is the wind direction let's say so if this is the wind direction and the first layer is trying to move in the direction of wind but due to coriolis deflection it deflected towards right okay towards right of me okay i am doing now with respect to me in uh, camera it might be uh, like uh, you might see it as left okay it is right with respect to me okay i am taking with respect to me so the wind direction is this and the first layer is deflected towards right okay when the first layer is deflected the second layer is dragged when first layer is in motion the second layer is also dragged it is also trying to move in the direction in which the first layer is moving but again coriolis deflection will cause it to deflect towards right in northern hemisphere okay so if first layer is moving in this direction second layer is moving at a direction right to the first layer then when second layer is moving there is another third layer let's say there is another third layer it also try to move in a direction in which second layer is moving but again due to coriolis deflection it will turn to right in the northern hemisphere then because of third layer which is in motion there will be another layer fourth layer below that also try to move in a direction in which third layer is moving but again due to coriolis deflection it will deflect towards right so what i am trying to say is every layer every bottom layer is set in motion because of 
the frictional effect generated by the above layer okay every layer is set in motion because of the dragging effect the dragging effect caused due to movement of the upper layer okay so the second layer is dragged by the movement of first layer third layer is dragged by movement of the second layer fourth layer is dragged by movement of third layer and each layer each layer is when they are set in motion they are moving towards right they are deflecting towards right as compared to the previous one the second one is moving in a direction right of first or it is deflected towards right with respect to the first the third layer is deflected with respect to the second layer towards right the fourth layer is also deflected towards right with respect to the third layer okay if you can see from surface this is the wind direction the first layer is set in motion at an angle 45 degree second second layer is moving at an angle to the first layer third layer is moving at an angle to the second layer fourth layer is moving at an angle to the third layer like that it will go on up to how much depth okay so this direction you can see like uh, direction is changing from each layer to the bottom layer and it is going towards right and then right and then right and then right and it will go so up to how much depth this water layer will move okay or is it going towards the ocean bottom it is going till the ocean bottom no so how much depth up to how much depth this movement will affect so when the first layer is moving it is moving because of the energy transferred from the wind to the first layer okay the first layer is set in motion because of the frictional energy which is transformed from the wind to first layer of water the second layer is moving because of the frictional energy which is transformed from first layer to second layer so here there is a transform of energy when water is moving because of friction what is friction it is giving some energy to move it is giving some energy so that the surface water or the water layer can move so the surface water is getting energy from the dragging effect of wind second layer is getting energy from the first layer and third layer is getting energy from the second layer fourth layer is getting energy from the third layer so each successive layer is receiving the energy from the upper layer and we know when energy transforms there is always a loss of energy there is uh, like the first layer consumes some energy to move and then it passes the energy to second layer the second layer consumes some energy to move and then passes to the third layer the third layer consumes some energy to uh, set in motion and then it will transform some energy to the uh, bottom layer so when there is passing of energy this energy will decrease yes or no when the first layer is getting energy from the wind it is maximum or it is higher than the energy which is received by the second layer yes or no the energy which is transformed from wind to first layer is higher than the amount of energy that is transformed from first to second layer and the energy which is transformed from first to second first layer to second layer is higher than the energy which is transformed from second to third layer okay suppose it is i'm uh, telling e1 e2 like that so e1 is higher than e2 is higher than e3 and e4 like that it will go on so the energy is decreasing from successive layer to the bottom layer if you are going towards the deeper region the energy is gradually decreasing so the water column or up to certain depth the water is set in motion and that depth is determined by the wind velocity or the energy which is given by the wind to the first layer 
which will gradually decrease decrease and then become zero at a certain depth okay this energy will decrease the wind energy which is transformed from wind to first layer is going to decrease towards second then going to decrease in third layer then fourth and then it will become zero at a certain depth so when it will become zero after that depth there will be no motion when this frictional energy which is transforming to the lower layer or which is setting the lower layer in motion with respect to the upper layer when this energy will become zero or negligible at that depth there will be no motion at that depth the water will not move the water will be still or stagnant okay so the average depth the average depth up to which the water can uh, uh, move or the water column is set in motion is 100 meter is found to be 100 meter from the surface so the depth of water column which is set in motion is 100 meter okay it is the average depth up to which there is movement okay so from each layer to the bottom layer the rotation is higher or it is rotating the deflection is higher it is deflecting to right of the upper layer okay each layer is deflecting to the right of upper layer and it is having lower energy than the upper layer the energy is also reducing and the deflection is increasing the deflection is increasing from the topmost layer to the layer which is at 100 meter depth or which is at the maximum depth up to which there is motion so this deflection is increasing and it will become opposite to the wind direction at a certain level okay the deflection is increasing towards right and then towards right and then towards right and then finally it will become opposite to the direction of wind at this depth at this depth when the direction of motion of water column or water layer when the direction of motion of water layer is opposite to the driving factor which is the wind at after that depth there is no motion okay after that depth there is no motion that means this is the deeper region or deepest layer which is set in motion this is the moment of movement direction of movement direction of deepest layer which is set in motion which is set in motion because of the wind or by the wind okay so when the movement direction of water layer is opposite to that of the wind direction which is causing the movement then after that depth there will be no movement or it is the movement direction of the deepest layer okay so this depth this maximum depth it can vary it can vary with respect to the frictional energy given by wind which means higher the velocity of wind it can be higher the depth up to which there is motion it can be higher if the wind velocity is high okay if the wind velocity is high if wind velocity is high then the depth can increase then the depth can then the depth up to which there is movement okay depth means up to which there is movement up to which movement is seen movement is noticed is higher so this depth is dependent on 
wind velocity or the frictional energy given by the wind higher the velocity higher the energy transformed to the first layer okay so higher the wind velocity higher will be the depth lower the wind velocity lower will be the depth but in an average it an in in an average we can take it up to 100 meter again wind velocity is affected by various factors wind velocity is also affected by various factors okay wind velocity is also dependent on latitude wind velocity is dependent on pressure difference latitude okay pressure gradient latitude and other factors okay so as this depth of water column depth of water column which is set in motion as it is dependent on wind velocity wind velocity it is also controlled by the latitude factor it is also controlled by the latitude factor because according to latitude or according to pressure gradient force the wind will move okay in response to the latitude or pressure gradient force the wind will move the wind speed wind speed will change wind velocity will change so if the wind velocity will change the energy transformed to the sea surface will change and then the water column depth will change okay so this depth of water column is variable but in an average we can take 100 meter in both the hemisphere whether it is in northern hemisphere or in southern hemisphere okay and this depth or this uh, layer of water or this column of water is called hickman's layer hickman's layer okay this column of water is called hickman's layer which is set in motion because of the wind and as we can see that there is a uh, continuous change in direction continuous deflection in direction from each upper layer to the lower layer there is a change in uh, deflection direction and the energy is also decreasing this length of arrow is showing the energy whereas the angle is shown by angle is showing the deflection okay the topmost layer is at 45 degree the second layer which is deflected from the first layer will be less than that the third layer which is deflecting with respect to second layer will be less than that the angle is decreasing the energy is also decreasing the angle of deflection is also decreasing okay means deflection will be higher with respect to wind okay deflection will be higher with respect to wind okay like this deflection will be higher with respect to wind and the angle between each layer like this angle this is 45 nearly 45 this in ideal conditions okay in ideal conditions this will be 45 then this is lower than that this is suppose this is one this is two this is three so this angle is decreasing okay this deflection angle is decreasing from uh, like in between each layer each successive layer okay and the angle is not only decreasing or you can say the angle or the deflection with respect to wind is gradually increasing as well as the energy is also decreasing the energy which is transforming from each layer to the lower layer is also decreasing so the resultant motion you can see the arrow or the length of the arrow is showing the energy or is the presentation of energy or is the reflection of the energy okay the arrow which is shown here it is showing the energy so it is gradually decreasing so we can see that there is a spiral kind of motion there is a spiral kind of motion this is wind the first layer is set in motion then second layer then third layer so there is a spiral kind of motion okay it is gradually decreasing so there is a spiral or spring spring like motion okay this is like this okay so this upper part so this is a spiral kind of motion okay gradually decreasing with depth 
gradually decreasing energy with depth and increasing deflection. Deflection is increasing with respect to the primary factor, the primary factor or the wind. Okay. Angle of deflection is increasing with respect to the wind and amount of energy which is transformed from each layer to lower layer is decreasing. So the resultant motion is spiral kind of motion. So this is called Ekman spiral. This layer or this column is called Ekman's spiral because of its spiral type of motion. Okay. If we see the resultant motion, resultant direction of motion of the 100 meter water column. Okay. Upper layer is at an angle 45 to the right, then little bit more to the right, then little bit more to the right. So, if you will see the resultant motion of this water column, this 100 meter water column, it will be 90 degree to the wind direction, 90 degree to the wind direction towards right in northern hemisphere. and towards left in southern hemisphere okay with respect to the wind direction if we will see the 100 meter water column the resultant motion of the 100 meter water column or the Ekman's water layer or Ekman's spiral layer if we will see the resultant motion it will be towards right to the wind direction or towards left in the southern hemisphere in ideal conditions okay this angle will be 90 degree in ideal conditions okay so uh, the surface layer the topmost layer will be at 45 degree and the resultant 100 meter water column will be towards right or left at an angle of 90 degree under ideal condition wherever in nature nothing is ideal so the surface water movement is generally less than 45 the surface water the movement of surface water the direction of movement of topmost layer which is in direct contact with the wind okay that is generally less than 45 it can range from 20 to 40 degree okay the topmost layer the movement of topmost layer can be 20 to 40 degree with respect to the wind because there are uh, various factors okay nothing is ideal as i have told in nature so the surface layer will be at 20 to 40 degree and the resultant will be 70 degree nearly 70 degree to the wind direction towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere okay and this movement this transportation of this 100 meter water column is called Ekman transport is called Ekman transport okay so the direction of Ekman transport is towards right in northern hemisphere towards left in southern hemisphere so i hope we got all the answer first one is wind second one is uh, the movement of water column is uh, not only in the surface it is affecting to the deeper region but up to a certain depth okay uh, but up to a certain depth which is 100 meter and the direction of motion is towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere with respect to wind so which is affecting the direction is the coriolis effect answer is coriolis deflection coriolis deflection coriolis deflection is the factor which is affecting the direction and which factor is uh, creating this move motion is the wind friction the wind friction and coriolis effect these are uh, these two factors are uh, responsible for movement and deflection of water column okay so why this ekman spiral or ekman transport came into picture it, it came from one observation that the icebergs, the icebergs which are floating over the sea or over the ocean surface, as well as the seeps, the surface, uh, the seep which are moving over the surface water, they're moving, they're not exactly moving in the wind direction. They're not moving in the 
direction of wind rather they are deflected towards uh, 40 degree 20 to 40 degree angle or 45 degree in ideal conditions as i have told so the movement of surface features like icebergs and uh, uh, ships which are moving over the surface ocean water they are not exactly moving in the direction of wind rather they are moving at an angle to the wind direction towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere so this observation led to this ekman transportation mechanism development of or the evolution of this ekman transport mechanism okay so we we studied about ekman transport now we'll study about the effects what we will get because of this segment transport okay what is the uh, uh, what is the effect on c or other processes on c because of this movement of ekman's layer or movement of upper 100 kilometer uh, 100 meter sorry 100 meter water 100 meter column of water what will be the effects so there is uh, if all of you have uh, like studied this that uh, the meteorological equator or the ITCZ intertropical convergence zone is at a uh, uh, the average latitude or the average position of ITCZ or the meteorological equator or the thermal equator it is also called the thermal equator okay which is also uh, which also represents the least pressure region or low pressure region near the equatorial region near the geographical equator geographical equator is at zero degree latitude geographical equator is at zero degree latitude but the thermal equator or the meteorological equator which is itcj it is again not constant it is moving it is moving in uh, uh, both towards the north and both towards the south but in the average position of the meteorological water is nearly four to five degree north Okay, 4 to 5 degree north is the average position of ITCZ. So, ITCZ is known as intertropical convergence zone. Intertropical convergence zone. Why? Because two tropical winds, they are converging there. Two tropical winds. What are those tropical winds? One is the northeast trade winds. Northeast trade winds which is coming from uh, northern tropics northern tropics or the horse latitude or the high pressure latitude northern tropics which is 30 degree north or it is the high pressure latitude so from here wind is coming to the itcz which is the thermal equator and from 30 degree south again uh, the southern tropic which is uh, uh, which is also high pressure region or the horse latitude so from 30 degree south wind is moving towards the itcz from 30 degree north wind is moving towards the itcz and because of Coriolis deflection there this is the high pressure and this is the low pressure so pressure gradient is like this pressure gradient is like this but due to Coriolis deflection they are deflecting towards right here this is the pressure gradient and because of Coriolis deflection, they are deflecting towards left. Okay. This is the pressure gradient. This is the pressure gradient. Whereas this is the resultant wind. Resultant wind. Okay. Which is deflected with respect to the pressure gradient. They are deflected towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in the southern hemisphere. So accordingly, they are named as northeast trade winds. As this appears, like it is coming from northeast, so they are named as northeast trade wind. It appears to be uh, coming from southeast direction, so it is named as southeast trade winds. Both these trade winds are converging at this latitude, which is thermal equator or the least pressure region in the equatorial region, which is called meteorological equator or the thermal equator or 
the ITCZ. Okay. As the position, average position of ITCZ is 4 to 5 degree north. When wind is moving, when wind is moving, it is passing through the geographical equator. Okay. This is 0 degree latitude and this is 5 degree north. Okay. So, southeast trade wind is passing through the geographical equator and going to northern side and moving to the northern side. Okay. So, the water column which is below 0 degree, the water column which is below 0 degree here. The water column which is here in southern hemisphere, they will deflect towards left of the wind. As I have told, the direction of Ekman transport is towards left. Ekman transport, the direction is towards right in northern hemisphere with respect to the wind. With respect to the wind, they will move towards right in northern hemisphere and towards left in southern hemisphere. Okay. So the water column which is below this 0 degree latitude which is in the southern hemisphere side they will deflect towards left of the wind and the water column or the water the surface water which is above 0 degree which is in the northern hemisphere they will move towards right of the wind yes or no the water the surface water which is uh, in the southern hemisphere region they will move towards left with respect to the wind because of Ekman's mechanism, okay, Ekman's transport mechanism. And in the northern hemisphere, just above zero degree latitude towards the northern hemisphere, the ocean surface water will move towards right with respect to the wind, okay. So here we can see there is a divergence of water at geographical equator. There is a divergence of water at 0 degree latitude or the geographical equator. So, this divergence of water, because of this divergence of water, because water is diverging, this is not uh, land surface that if they will reap or they will diverge, there will be some space. Okay. So, if it is water, when water is moving away from each other, when water mass in the equatorial region are moving away from each other, then how they will be refilled, how the space will be refilled because of or by upwelling or by upward movement of the bottom water. Because there is separation or divergence of surface water, because it is water, there cannot be any space. You cannot expect that there will, there will be a hole, water will diverge and there will be a, a basin or depression. Okay. So, if the water is moving, the space has to be filled. So, by whom it will be filled? It will be filled by upward moving water. It will be, it will be filled by the upward moving water. When there is divergence, the bottom water will rise. The bottom water will rise to fill the gap. Okay. This is called equatorial upwelling. This is called equatorial upwelling. Okay, when there is divergence, this equatorial divergence because of the southeast trade wind, because of southeast trade wind, because meteorological equator is at north, 4 degree north, average position is 4 degree north, it is not constant, it is moving. Okay, but average position is 5 degree north. So, southeast trade wind is passing through the geographic equator and the water column, the surface water column below 0 degree which are in southern hemisphere side, they will deflect towards left with respect to wind and the water column, surface water column in the northern hemisphere, they will deflect towards right with respect to the wind. So, there will be divergence and because of the divergence, there will be upward movement of deeper water, which is called upwelling as it is happening in the equatorial region, it is called equatorial upwelling. Okay. So, upwelling is good because it brings nutrient-rich water from bottom surface to 
topmost region because surface water is generally lack of nutrient surface water is lacking of nutrients so when there is upwelling deeper water comes to the top layer so deeper water is nutrient rich deeper water is nutrient rich whereas top layer is nutrient poor top layer is nutrient poor okay so when the bottom layer or bottom water comes up or when there will be upwelling so this nutrient rich water is rising to the top layer so when nutrient rich water rise to the top layer or the ocean surface then there will be increase of biomass or increase of productivity there will be increase of productivity ocean productivity means higher number of organisms can survive the phytoplanktons the phytoplanktons which are uh, uh, which are the primary uh, like uh, organism or the photosynthesizing organism of the ocean surface okay the phytoplanktons which are the primary producer or the photosynthesizing animals or photosynthesizing Uh, organism on the sea surface they will get the nutrient and their number will grow so when their number will grow it is called increase in productivity because nutrient is coming phytoplankton growth will be higher phytoplankton growth will be higher which is called increase in productivity okay so ocean water productivity will increase because of upwelling of nutrient rich bottom water so this is one positive effect okay which is caused because of divergence of equatorial water which is due to the ekman transport okay then in coastal region if we'll see what will happen because of uh, ekman transport in coastal region also we can notice upwelling and downwelling upwelling means bottom water will come up and downwelling means upper water will go down or top layer will go down so how it is happening let's say this is one example of northern hemisphere west coast suppose it is kerala coast or uh, maharashtra coast or west am uh, sorry not kerala uh, kerala or west Beng uh, not west bengal kerala or uh mumbai or maharashtra coast or your karnatak coast okay or karnatak the western coast of india okay let's say this is the example of western coast of india okay in the northern hemisphere what will happen here which is the wind in northern hemisphere In, in over the indian subcontinent indian subcontinent is present in the tropical region right indian subcontinent is present in the tropical region means within 0 degree to 30 degree north then 30 degree north to 0 degree latitude this is here somewhere our indian uh, subcontinent is there okay which is the wind flowing here the wind is northeast trade wind right the wind is northeast trade wind okay suppose if we'll talk about the coastal region okay suppose we'll talk about the coastal region and it is the west coast of indian subcontinent here it is on northern hemisphere let's talk about indian subcontinent it is same will be uh, for other continents okay this is the west coast and wind is flowing from north to south for example this is the northern side and wind is flowing from north to south so if this is the direction of wind if this is the direction of wind according to ekman transport this is we are talking about northern hemisphere okay this is the coastal region that is the coastal region and uh, this is the direction of wind if this is the direction of wind what will be the direction of ekman transport if it is northern hemisphere the direction of ekman transport is right of the wind right 
it is towards right of the wind direction if the direction of ekman transport is towards right of the wind direction particularly at the western coast in the northern hemisphere it is away from the coastal region you can see the water is moving away from the coast yes or no if the wind is flowing from north to south this is the wind direction which is flowing from north to south because of that the wind is uh, setting the surface water column in motion and it is moving towards right of the wind direction according to ekman transport the water column the surface water column is moving towards right of the wind direction if it is moving towards right of the wind direction then with respect to coast they are moving away with respect to coast the surface water column is moving away so if the surface water column is moving away from the coast whether there will be free space here no this free this free space will be occupied by the upwelling water the bottom water will come up the bottom water will rise up and then fill the space okay because wind is from north to south surface water is moving towards right of the wind that means it is moving away from the coast so to fill the space in the coastal region the bottom water will rise up okay so bottom water is again nutrient rich so the nutrient rich bottom water will rise to the upper surface okay this is the process which is happening in western coast of india like kerala coast or maharashtra coast or karnataka coast okay or gujarat coast okay so western coast of india this mechanism is happening and as i have told if the nutrient rich water will come up the surface productivity will increase because the number of phytoplanktons will increase and then the organism which are dependent on phytoplanktons they are called zooplankton so they they will also increase as the ocean biomass is increasing it is termed as increase in ocean productivity so because of nutrient rich water coming up because of upwelling because of upwelling happening in the western coast of india the productivity is higher productivity is higher in western coastal region of indian subcontinent if we'll talk about eastern coast of indian subcontinent like odisha coast west bengal coast andhra coast okay we'll talk about the eastern coast of india sorry not uh, this is not the example of eastern coast but this is a wind from south to north okay i will talk about odisha and uh, west bengal coast and andhra coast which is the eastern coast of india you will see about the eastern coast of india okay here also the wind is same the tropical wind trade wind wind is moving from north to south okay if we'll talk about eastern coast the wind is moving from north to south which is the trade wind which is the northeast trade wind the northeast trade wind is moving in the coastal region let's say it is moving from north to south okay for example in a southerly direction the wind is moving so the water column will move towards right of the wind direction the surface water will move towards right of the wind direction according to ekman transport indian subcontinent is in northern hemisphere so the according uh, the ekman transport direction is right of the wind direction so the water will move towards right with respect to the wind direction so now the water is approaching the coast now the water is approaching the coast or the water is moving towards the coast if we if we see the eastern coast of india or the uh, bay of bengal coast okay so if we'll see the water is approaching towards the coast water is moving towards the coastline so if the water is moving towards the coastline will they rise over the continent will they go and flood the continental region no where where they will go they will downwell they will sink 
the water is continuously moving towards the coastline water is continuously moving towards the coastline if water is moving towards the coastline where they will go will they rise and uh, flood the continental landmass no so what they will do they will downwell they will sink they will go and downwell like here you can see they are moving and then sinking there is sinking sinking of surface water sinking of surface water when there is sinking of surface water it is called downwelling that means the surface water is coming down as the water approaches the coast it will downwell it will sink down okay and this is called downwelling so as there is downwelling the surface water is again as i have told surface water is nutrient poor surface water is nutrient poor surface water is nutrient poor so in the eastern coast of india as there is no upwelling it is mainly affected by downwelling okay as it is affected by downwelling nutrient rich water cannot come up okay nutrient rich water is the bottom water it cannot come up because eastern side is suffering through downwelling it is affecting it is getting affected by downwelling eastern coast of india so there is less productivity in the eastern side as compared to the western side okay the productivity is higher in the western coast of india and it is lower in the eastern coast of india okay eastern margin of indian subcontinent or the bay of bengal coast is having less productivity as compared to the arabian sea coast because eastern side is affected by downwelling as the water column approaches the coast water column approaches the coast with respect to the wind motion you can see the wind motion is in a southerly direction so the water columns the resultant motion of water column is towards the coast so there is downwelling but in the western coast as southerly wind flows the water column moves away from the uh, coastal region if water column moves away from the coastal region there will be upwelling and nutrient rich water will come up so it will increase the productivity that's why the western coast of india is uh, having higher productivity than the eastern coast okay so this is also similar example as i have told the eastern coast of indian subcontinent this is similar uh, example but direction of wind is changing okay here western coast of northern hemisphere like arabian uh, sea coast in the indian subcontinent but wind is from south to north now wind direction is from south to north okay west coast but wind is from south to north if wind is from south to north during monsoon time during uh, southwest monsoon time during southwest monsoon time wind is from south to north in western continent uh, sorry western part of indian subcontinent wind is flowing like this right during southwest monsoon wind is flowing like this so wind direction is from south to north okay so during that time what will happen what will be the resultant uh, motion of surface water column according to ekman transport it is towards right of the wind direction it is towards right of the wind direction so the surface water column is approaching the coastline surface water is moving towards the coastline so where they will go there is continuous movement of surface water towards the coast where they will go so they will sink they will sink and downwell they will sink which is called downwelling okay if the wind is from south to north in the western coast as i have told in southwest monsoon time during that period water is approaching the coast so there will be downwelling and if we we'll talk about wind from north to south like trade winds north east trade winds when they are flowing when north to south wind is flowing in the western coast of continent in the uh, let's say western coast of indian subcontinent 
in the Arabian Sea coast. So water is moving away. So bottom water is rising up, which is called upwelling. Okay. So this is another uh, aspect or upwelling and downwelling, which are caused because of Ekman transport in both northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So here I have talked about northern hemisphere. Now your task is to practice what will happen to the southern hemisphere in western coast and southern hemisphere in eastern coast. Suppose this is 0 degree latitude, this is the southern hemisphere and in southern hemisphere, let us say this is 30 degree south latitude. So, southeast trade wind is flowing, southeast trade wind is flowing. So, let us say this is Australian subcontinent, right? Australian, uh, Australian continent. Let us say this is Australia, okay? So, what will happen in the western coast of Australia? What will happen in the eastern coast of Australia? You can practice by your own, okay? In southern hemisphere, Ekman transport is towards left. Ekman transport is towards left. So, what will happen in the western coast? What will happen in the eastern coast of Australia? Okay, or any southern continent? What will happen? Whether there will be upwelling or downwelling? Okay. So, with this. I will end the session. Thanks for your presence.